Let's take a look at electricity consumption of household appliances. That's the topic for project three in math 114. Project three has two documents. One is a Word document that goes over the instructions for the entire project, tells you exactly what to do and where the points are going to be allocated. There's also an Excel document. The Excel document is not very big, okay? It's just a few things, and all the information in the Excel document is also in the Word document. But you do need that Excel document. And the reason is you're going to modify and turn in this Excel document. You're not going to turn in a Word document for this project, just this Excel document after you modify it and you complete the steps in this project. So let's go over what this project's all about. Do you ever wonder how your electricity bill is computed? The following table gives the watts of power that are typically required by several major and some some lesser appliances. We got the source here. The the numbers are rounded off a little bit so that we can have a little bit nicer uh, computation. So the first table we have these eight appliances, so to speak, eight electrical appliances, and the number of watts that it takes to power them. Watts is the power of electricity. Now, if we assume that we run those on an average day, we're not going to assume that we run them for 24 hours. For example, you're not going to run your dishwasher for 24 hours. You only run it for maybe a couple hours a day. You might run your ceiling fan for 12 hours. A few things are going to run for 24 hours, like your satellite dish or your clock radio. So what we're going to do in this project is we are going to add columns to that Excel spreadsheet, that Project 3 data spreadsheet. So right now it just has a column for appliance, power and watts, powers and hours per day. And then you're gonna add columns and your project should be in the Excel spreadsheet. To get full credit, as you add columns, you're gonna be asked to calculate some things. You must do the calculations in Excel. You're gonna lose points if you do the calculations on uh, another calculator and just type the numbers in. We want it so that if the, we were to change our numbers, uh, for example, in how many hours we use something, it should automatically update the rest of the columns. These are the columns you're gonna add in this one. So we've got the three already, but what we're gonna add is a column that calculates the number of kilowatts of power, okay? Just a reminder, what we already have is watts, which we wanna convert watts into kilowatts we can do that because we know that one kilowatt is a thousand watts so we're going to have a column that goes ahead and finds the kilowatts by dividing the watts by a thousand however we also want a column our second column we're going to add is going to compute the kilowatt hours kilowatt hours takes into account the kilowatts and the hours per day and so we're going to multiply our kilowatt column by our hours per day column then we're going to have an, a third column that we're going to add, but this one is kilowatt hours in the entire year. So you're going to have to kind of normalize that for the entire year based on an average day. Uh, we have that, but we're going to need to multiply that by the number of days in a year. Next, we're going to add a column to find the electricity cost of running each appliance for the entire year. And it says that electricity, we're going to use 13 cents per kilowatt hour. We now already have a column that gives us all the kilowatt hours for the year. So we're just going to need to multiply that by that 13 cents to give us our cost. Our fifth column is actually going to take a look at how much coal would be required to run each of these. Now, coal is still powering several power plants in the U.S. And coal generates one kilowatt hour of electricity for every 0.00052 tons of coal. It does generate electricity based on how much coal you put in. So the question I have is to run each of these, we want a column that multiplies the kilowatt hours times the, or divides it rather, uh, to find out how many tons we have. So we're gonna have that kilowatt hours, one kilowatt hour is 0 0.00052 tons. So two kilowatt hours, we multiply that number by two and three kilowatt, we're going to multiply it by three. Our sixth column we're going to add is the same as the last one, except we're actually going to talk about 
if we used oil, as in uh, gas, to power each appliance. On an annual basis, uh, a barrel of oil generates uh, electricity, and we've got a conversion right here of 0 0.00173 barrels of oil will generate one kilowatt hour of electricity. So just like in the last one, what we are going to do is we're going to say how many kilowatt hours of electricity are needed and then multiply it by that conversion so that we can figure out how many barrels of oil would be needed. Now, the last thing we're going to add on our spreadsheet is we're going to add a row. OK, up to this point, we've put six more columns in our spreadsheet. It started with three columns and then we added one, two, three, four, five, six columns that we calculated something in each of those six. But now we're going to go on the bottom of our spreadsheet and we're going to add a row. We're going to add a row and we're going to call it our total row. What we're going to do is we're going to then find the total of each of our columns and spit it out at the bottom. Now, technically, you don't need to find the total of all the things. Uh, for example, if you were to find the total of the number of appliances, the names of the appliances, that's going to be kind of a weird thing. So as you go through, you can pretty much find the total of each one just by summing and finding using our sum command. And focus on that you're answering the right question. Think about that it makes sense. Um, and hopefully, we want to play, pay attention to any additional specifications okay so if there's something that is confusing or you're not sure what you're wanted to do um, ask your professor professors will often clarify their expectations regarding the format and presentation of your submission for me I'd be happy if you just turned in a nice looking Excel document you don't need to turn in any word documents there's no essay questions to do